One, two, one, two. One, two, one, two, one, two. Hello everybody and welcome to the stream today. My name is Teacher Rich, also known as Professor Rich. And today we are talking about Magna what now? Magna what did you say? Magna what the what? Uh, what's going on with this? Ooh, oh, that's a nice new problem. Why is it that Active Inspire's gone really weird all of a sudden? Excuse me one moment, folks. Okay, we seem to be okay. <clears throat> so today we are talking about Magna what now? We're going to discuss Magna Carta, we're going to discuss important dates, we are going to match dates to events, and we're going to compare ye olde English to today's English. Thank you very much for participating in the poll. Um, so, do you like English history? I love English history. 49% meh, so-so, um, 28%, and I don't care, just teach me, 22%, for a total of 67 votes. Well done, everybody. And can I say hello today? Hello to uh, Zavi Rionard, hello to Rashid, hello Lolly Lolly, hello Ashley Chen, hello Kamwa, hello Vina, hello Julia, hello Daisy, hello Romelia, hello Zoya, hello Manuel Dujuli, hello Anna Watts, hello Miss... Uh, th uh, I'm your favourite teacher, that's wonderful Sonia Buttarini, hello Hello Francesco So we had a question there from Kamwa who says How do I get member? So in some countries you have the option to click join You can join the membership And that's um, very cheap on Oxford Online English and you get access to all of the streams, all of the English streams. We've done loads of them. You get access to all of them for like five pounds or something. So do that if you can. It's not available in all countries. Okay, let's move on with the class today. Magna what now? Magna say what? What did you say? A ma what did you call my Magna? <laughs> Don't you say nothing about my mud Magna. <laughs> okay, so Magna what now? What is Magna Carta? What do you think, guys? Answers in the chat. Do we have anyone who knows exactly what Magna Carta is? It's a very important document, important all over the world. Not just England, it's important all over the world. So, it's important in world history. Romelia says it's one of the most important documents of mankind.
Ah, I was still muted. Brilliant. It's well done. I was just talking to myself about how I need a hotkey to mute myself. So what answers do we have about Magna Carta? Uh, Romelia says, I've just visited Salisbury Cathedral and Stonehenge. Oh, can you explain for the other learners what, what, what is the significance of those places? What is the significance of those places? I have no idea if you're listening, teacher. I can't hear. You can't hear me, Manuel. Domenico says, Magna Carta rings, rings a bell, but I can't recall detailed information about it. It's like the UN Rights Declaration. Uh, well, it's, it's, it's like the UN Rights Declaration, but it's, it's not that it is the UN Rights Declaration. So why don't we get into it? So Magna Carta is an English document that's very old and it's one of the first legal documents in human history that helps to guarantee certain rights of people. And we're going to learn about that. Now, probably if you live in a country with some freedoms, then you do owe some of that freedom to Magna Carta. So it is obviously a very important document. So let's talk about it. Let's start with the dates. We're going to practice how you say certain dates in British English. So look at the dates on the screen. And if you can at home, I want you to practice saying these dates. So try to say those dates in British English. Okay. Now, obviously, it doesn't make a lot of sense to type in the chat because what I actually want you to do is to say the dates out loud in British English. Right. I'm going to deal with the neighbor's dog. Hold on. All right, I'm back. So now I'm going to model those. So this is how you say them. If you are alone, then you can practice with me. It's the 15th of June, 1215. So the 15th of June, 1215. Then we've got August, 1215. Then October, what? <sighs> then we have October, 1216. We've got 1217, 1225, 1297, 1628, 1776, and 1948. So what important things do you think happened on those dates? Let's find out. I'm going to show you a list of events on the right and a list of dates on the left. Take a look, and can you match the dates to the events? So look at the events first, read the events. Do you understand the vocabulary used in each of those sentences? If you don't, then you can ask me in the chat what certain words mean, 
and I want you to try and match the sentences to the dates. All right. So have a look. There are some obvious ones and some that are a little bit more difficult. By the way, everyone, do smash that like button, hit subscribe, and join the membership in Oxford Online English. You just hit that join button. It's very cheap, and you get access to hundreds of live streams that we've done in the past. And here, we don't just learn English. We learn all kinds of awesome things, like Magna Carta. Magna, say what? Manny Camden says, how's life treating you? You're in the pink of health. What is the pink of health? Is that an English expression? In the pink of health means excellent condition. Wow, I've never heard that. Interesting. So I'm going to give you all about three minutes to organize those events. I want you to match, match the events to the dates. Match the events to the dates. And does anyone have any questions about the um, vocabulary? Sandhu22 says, hello, Rich. I am from Pakistan. Hello there, Sandhu22. Daisy said, I just realized I'm only aware of American history. Is that what they taught you, Daisy? Just American history? Ah, but this, there, there, there is some American history that's very important with respect to... Magna Carta. What do you think it is? It's a very important event in American history and a very important document in American history, which relates to Magna Carta. Teba says, I have a question. Yes, Teba. I'm here to answer questions. My name is Teacher Rich and this is Oxford Online English. You can go to OxfordOnlineEnglish.com and you can get a quality teacher right now for less than 10 euros per hour amazing where do you live rich are you a native speaker yes i'm a native speaker and i live in oxford so you have about 30 seconds now to get in your answers about 30 seconds get in those final answers We have answers from Anawat, Lolly Lolly, Shokul, Gwen, 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 Shokul, Gwen, Chop Mung, I dub lap, Chop Mung, I dub lap. Um, Manuel, Liban, Haji, Katarina. Very good. Okay, I'm going to give you the answers now. You ready for some answers? So, 15th of June, 1215 is F. King John agrees with Magna Carta to prevent a possible civil war. And then we have August 1215. We've got Pope Innocent III annuls Magna Carta. He said that King John was forced to accept it. And then later, a year later, King Henry agrees with it again. <laughs> And then later, Magna Carta gets into law. Magna Carta underpins the Declaration of Independence of the United States. And then finally, Magna Carta is referenced in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. So some really interesting events there. We've got some interesting vocabulary as well. Annuls? What's that? What is annuls? <coughs> What's annuls? And what is incorporate? Teba said, is it right that in Britain when you call someone to take lunch or a restaurant, 
one pay for himself or one person pay for the two. Um, traditionally, Teba, the man, will pay for the woman or the parent for the child or a friend might pay for their friend if they want to congratulate them or something. Um, there is, There was a, a modernization movement where that started to disappear and lots of people started to pay 50-50, even on a date with a man and a woman, 50-50. But I think that traditionalism is coming back, actually, in the UK. And I think, basically, that people have realised, oh, it's quite nice when someone buys you um, lunch or dinner. So... Let's go back to that. So that that it, there is, there does seem to be a traditionalist backlash, actually, a big one uh, coming. And there's kind of a lost generation, which was my, my generation, actually. People aged between 25 and 40 now who grew up on sort of modern ideas. Um, and a lot of that generation are very lost. And the young people of today are kind of rebelling against that, going back to tradition. And uh, all power to them because um, my personal experience has taught me that it works better. Okay, so what we're going to do is we are going to look at some ye olde English. We're going to look at Old English in Magna Carta and we want to decode it to the present day. So let's have a look at some of the language in Magna Carta and try to understand it. Magna Carta was an agreement between King John and the leaders of England. And it was an agreement that gave rights to all people in England, not only the king. So... Here's one of the first parts of Magna Carta. It says, The barons shall elect 25 of their number to keep and cause to be observed with all their might the peace and liberties. So, can anyone write this in the chat in modern English? How can we say this in modern English? Someone wants to study in Britain. How much does it cost to do that? Um, it's approximately thirty to forty thousand pounds per year if you want to study in university in Britain. <coughs> I have the picture. I've taken it. It's a duplicate. You're not allowed to photograph Magna Carta. Really? Is that true? You're not allowed to photograph Magna Carta. Is that is that true? Oh, I see. The original is enclosed. Ah. That's interesting. So we want to decode this to modern... Want to decode this to modern English? So type your answers in the chat. Let's see. Daisy has said the barons... What's a baron, Daisy? <laughs> the barons should elect 25 people to maintain peace and democracy. Democracy? It doesn't say anything about democracy. <laughs> so here's my translation into modern English. It's English leaders will choose... 25 people from their group and those people will use their power 
to keep peace and freedom in England. Okay, let's move on to the next one. So the next one says, No scootage nor aid may be levied in our kingdom without its general consent. So anyone got any ideas for this? What is scootage? And what is levy, levied, our kingdom without consent? Scootage, aid, levied, kingdom, consent. Have some rather dated words there. I guess we know kingdom because of the United Kingdom. But maybe with scootage, that's a bit of a weird one. Consent and levied. Can anyone try to... Translate this. Nasir, well done. Levy is a tax. That is absolutely right. Levy is a tax. Twenty-five paladins. Oh, Vladimir, I, I like the way you think. Consent means mutual agreement. Kind of, yeah. It means permission, actually. You give permission. Like you say, you can. Can I smoke? You can. I give my consent. You can. By the way, everybody, do take note that after this, I will be streaming on youtube.com slash Professor Rich. Uh, we are live at 2 p.m. in UK. Don't miss this one. We're going to talk about rewarding. Um, so that's youtube.com slash Professor Rich streaming after this one in about 30 minutes. Zoya says consent is agreement. Oh, and Zoya, I saw your message before. You said thank you for Frank Klepaki. <laughs> That's cool. He's great. I like if you like Frank Klepaki, I got some other recommendations for you. Actually, maybe Vladimir like this one. So these guys kind of cheesy, but uh, it's like fantasy metal, and I love them a lot. So check out um, Glory Hammer. And you probably want to start with the song called Hoots Force. So check out that song, Glory Hammer Hoots Force. Scootage! What is a scootage? Oh my word. Scootage. So scootage is a tax. It's land tax. It's a tax. Scootage is tax. Okay. So levy a scootage means make a tax. Ask someone for money. It's when the government says, give me money. All right. So I'm going to give you my version of this. Let's go for this. No tax can be made. Um in England without agreement. No, let's say unless we agree. So basically the king cannot make taxes for no reason. Oh, Daisy's got a good one. No money can be taxed without people's permission. Basically, yeah. Basically. It's, it's no tax can be made, actually. Levy means to make the tax, to raise the tax. All right. Let's move on. Next. For a trivial offence, a free man shall be fined only in proportion to the degree of his offence. For a trivial offence. Trivial offence. A free man shall be fined, be fined only in proportion to 
the degree of his offense. A lot of interesting vocabulary there. Levy also means joined in harmony. Really? That in some other language, Daisy, <laughs> Levy means uh, join in harmony, because I'm not finding that. <laughs> um, <clears throat> excuse me. A reasonable sentence according with their deeds, says Romelia. Very good. The fine should commensurate with the degree of the offence committed. A man's punishment for the crime that he's done must be equal to his offence. Ah, there's some great ones here. Well done, everybody. Well done, everybody. Um, so I think this is for a um, for a minor offence, for a minor, for breaking a minor law. Uh, a citizen, that's a free man. Um, a, a, citizen, a citizen, the punishment will be equal to the severity it's equal to how severe how serious the um, offense was wow it's not easy this one <laughs> for breaking a minor law the punishment will be equal to how serious the offense was something like that if you're enjoying the stream, make sure you smash that like button, hit subscribe, and join the membership. You can join the membership for not very much money. It's very cheap. Next. No free man shall be seized or imprisoned or stripped of his rights or possessions or outlawed or exiled. No free man shall be seized or imprisoned or stripped of his rights or possessions or outlawed or exiled. Wow. Wow. That's a big one, isn't it? Rich, can I use the word civilian instead of free man? So when they said free man, they arguably meant, actually maybe, sorry, civilian is not the right word. It's not civilian, it's um, citizen. It's citizen. So, when they were talking about free man, they were using an early understanding of the idea of a citizen. So if you are a foreigner, you're not a free man under English law, right? But if you're an English citizen, then you're a free man. That's how it worked. So this was the idea of being a free man back then. So it's kind of an ancient word of free version of free man. Right? It doesn't just mean, oh, I'm a person and I'm free. Uh, no, you are a person recognized by England to be free. Uh, you are a citizen of England. So this is how they justified, um, for example, that we have rights, but uh, those people that we have a war with, they don't have rights. <laughs> Something like that. All right. I, I'm not an expert. It's interesting though. So how can we how can we translate this into modern English? A nice easy modern English.
So ChatGPT is going to jump in for this one. My best friend, ChatGPT. What can you sell me, ChatGPT? So ChatGPT says, no one can be arrested, lose their stuff, or be kicked out of their place without good reason. <laughs> That's great. No one can be arrested, lose their stuff, or be kicked out of their place. Kicked out of their place. That's brilliant. <laughs> okay, that's pretty. That's pretty good. Uh, maybe we need to make it a bit more adult, though. <laughs> it sounds like a teenager speaking. Okay, no one can be arrested, have their things taken away, or be forced to leave their home without proper legal reasons. Okay, <laughs> that's great. All right. Phenomenal. Fantastic. So we've started to understand some of the old English in Magna Carta. Let's have a look at some vocabulary that we still use today, which comes basically from Magna Carta. So these are terms and words which people still use. And you'll see them in American dramas. People will talk about them in conversations in the pub. Everybody knows what these things mean. But do you know what they mean? Let's have a look. So we have habeas corpus, charter, consent, exile, inalienable rights, and arbitrary. Habeas corpus, charter, consent, exile, inalienable rights, and arbitrary. So do you know what these things mean? Basically the same as the Spanish Constitution. Get out of here, Manuel. Don't compare your Spanish nonsense to our English Constitution. <laughs> Actually, Magna Carta is not a constitution. It's just a document that's enshrined in law. But I refuse to accept that your Spanish nonsense um, contains the similar things. <laughs> Let's ask ChatGPT. Ah, the Spanish Constitution refers to habeas corpus. So the Spanish Constitution refers to Magna Carta. And honestly, Manuel, I don't blame you because why wouldn't you refer to Magna Carta? It's brilliant. <laughs> it seems like the Spanish Constitution was heavily inspired by Magna Carta. <laughs> So what answers have we got here? We've got answers from a lot of people. Julia says act, an unlawful act. Not bad. Treatment. Yeah, pretty good. It's actually imprisonment. But well done to everybody who had a go there. You were pretty much on the money. A charter was a legal document granting freedom we have. Tax, granting tax. Win. Are you sure? Granting rights. We don't grant tax. We want freedom from tax. Ah, oh, in, in court, our judges say, Carta Magna, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> That's brilliant. <clears throat> Manuel, that, it's kind of weird, though, isn't it? Do you think that the Spanish kings in the past would believe you if you told them, in the future, your central... Um, sovereign legal document will refer to English law <laughs> he'd, he'd say they, he'd say call it an outrage it would be off with your head <laughs> those English tyrants we don't need their laws uh, alright number three consent is agreement or permission number four exile is forced removal from one's country Inalienable rights means rights that cannot be taken away. 
An arbitrary means based on a random choice or personal whim. Does anybody have any questions about our amazing vocabulary there? If you use this vocabulary, you will blow the minds of the IELTS examiner. Rich Nolan, 2023. <laughs> you can be like, well, I was recently studying habeas corpus and I came across an interesting point, actually, about the advantages and disadvantages of using renewable energies. <laughs> All right. So I at the start of this class, I was banging on about how Magna Carta has affected all these modern things today. So let's talk a bit about that. I'm going to show you some modern day implications of Magna what now? And I want you to tell me what you think those implications are, because I've hidden some of the words. So, modern implications of Magna Sechut. Here's what we got. We have 10 of them. <clears throat> so, what do you think they are? Answers in the chat. And for this one, I'm going to give you a lovely six minutes. Six, six minutes. That's six minutos. Okay. Six minutes. Que lo hagamos. Que lo hagamos en seis minutos. Oye, pues... A mí me da igual. A mí me da igual. Que yo qué sé. Yo qué sé. Eh, eh tía, qué sé. Qué sé yo. Qué sé yo. Yo qué sé. <laughs> okay. Sorry. I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, there we go. Que no es para tanto, que no es para tanto, tío. No es para tanto, vamos, vamos, no es para tanto. Es que no roban, no roban, eh, pues no es para tanto. Es <laughs> la Spanish attitude. Están muy corruptos, pero no es para tanto, no es para tanto. <laughs> Nadie está pagando los impuestos, pero no es para tanto. Rich, you're speaking in Mexican accent. Is that what's happened to me? Oye, no es para tanto. Isn't that? I thought that's Mexican, no? Cinco de mayo. Isn't, isn't that Mexican? Oye, pues somos mexicanos y... No, no. Eh, gringo. Oh yeah, uh, so you're my Mexicano. I can't. What is that? That's like Italian. I can do an Italian person speaking Spanish. Hablo italiano, pero no hablo mucho español. Vamos. What about German? Can I do a German speaking Spanish? Yo. Hablo. Realmente bien. Realmente bien. Vamos al río. Al alemán. <laughs> I'm now doing a German person speaking Spanish. All right. Welcome, everybody. This is Oxford Online English. Go to OxfordOnlineEnglish.com to get access to any of our amazing teachers at low, low prices. My name is Teacher Rich, also known as Professor Rich. And you should go check out YouTube.com slash Professor Rich, where we will be streaming in approximately 20 minutes. 
I feel neglected. You don't speak my language. Oh, okay. Just give me a second, all right? Salut ce mai faci? Salut ce mai faci? Salut ce mai faci, Romelia? Salut ce mai faci? It means how are you, apparently. Eh... I think. What do you think, Romelia? Does it sound okay? All right. So we have number one, freedom of speech. <clears throat> number two, the right to a fair trial. Can you speak Spanish fluently, says Brenda? Mm. Pues, pues, solía. Pero ahora no mucho, la verdad. Aún puedo, pues, eh, el entender se me da bien aún, pero ahora que eh, me cuesta mucho hablar, ¿sabe? Es que me falta la práctica. Um, equal protection under the law. Property rights. Checks and balances. Have you heard of checks and balances? This is, these are really important terms. We use these all the time. People talk about checks and balances at work, in schools, in governments. We need checks and balances to make sure that this is good. You have a flair for Roman languages. I have a flair for languages, Romelia. I'm a language teacher. Okay. I can speak a bit of Vietnamese. And also, Nanda. Nandis. Uh, what is that? <laughs> okay. Anyway, you speak Spanish like a flirty man. Really? Hola, ¿qué tal? <laughs> Hola, tía, pues... ¿Vamos a mi casa o qué? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Oye, pues, uh, debería saber, <laughs> debería saber caído del cielo, porque me pareces un ángel. <laughs> uh, right, number six, innocent until proven guilty. Number number seven. Eminent domain. Number eight, universal suffrage. Number nine, the prohibition of torture. And number 10 is freedom of religion. So we've got some amazingly important modern day implications which came from Magna Carta. Amazingly important modern day implications. Magna Carta, an important document and some excellent vocabulary for you to revise here today. You can download the notes from today's class right now. You can download those notes from here. And they will also be available in the description down below. And you can ask any questions right now that you wish to ask about learning English or about life in general or about how to talk to girls in Spanish. <laughs> no, I'm just joking about the last one. I don't know anything about that. Nothing. I know nothing. Okay, nothing. <laughs> I don't know anything about that. All right. So any questions about English, by the way, do check out another stream. Dong, 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 on my channel, and that's in 15 minutes. That's 10, 5, 15 minutes, youtube.com slash Professor Rich, and we are continuing our series on habits. This time we're talking about mm -mm, rewards. That's an important part of habit creation. So, question time, folks. Let's see what we got. Do you follow UFC, mate, says Yasin. 
No, I don't. But I do like to watch a bit of boxing and I do enjoy UFC sometimes. Julia says, teacher rich. <laughs> and I don't know what, what she is reacting to, but thank you, Julia. How many languages can you speak? Says Gwyn, Gwen, 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 Gwen. I can't quite get it. Yintu, Gwen, 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 Gwen. How many languages can you speak? So English, perfect. <laughs> English, mast. I'm a master. I am a master. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Teacher Rich, and today I'm going to speak in received pronunciation. Here, we speak in a, a way that high society... Uh, okay, whatever. I'm going to speak in my natural accent. English perfect, Spanish. Pronun my speaking has gone not good. Because when you don't use it, you lose it. But my comprehension is perfect. I understand everything. I can understand stand-up comedians in Spanish. Uh, I can understand people who speak mega fast. I can understand, you know that guy, the laughing guy? Does anyone know this? That meme of the laughing guy? <laughs> uh, I can understand him. And if you can understand him, you understand all the Spanish. <clears throat> Um, moving on, moving on, moving on. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> uh, there's my reflux of the day. And other languages. Um, I'm learning Vietnamese. I learned some Japanese. I would like to learn more. I know basic German, French, Italian. Maybe that's it. German, French, Italian. Yeah. I know one word in Portuguese. Obrigado. Uh, <laughs> obrigado. Obrigado. That's basically it. That's my Portuguese. Um, that's it. Is that it? Oh, no, wait. I know some Russian. And I know some Ukrainian. <laughs> I know Russian. Nichibo. And I know Ukrainian. Tak, tak. <laughs> Just one word, though. But um, yeah, ma mainly Spanish, English, and I'm learning Vietnamese. Café suada. Ang antic café. Antic café. Bang bang. Some basic Vietnamese. So, what questions we got? If you're into video games, what's your favorite video game? Uh, I love video games, Yasin, and I can't really tell you my favorite video game because I love loads of video games, and the video game that I particularly like changes, like, basically all the time. But if you bear with me one moment, I will open up my Steam account, and I will provide you with an insight into my favorites, okay? This is a rare insight into the personal life of a Professor Rich, all right? So you're honored and privileged, and you should send me money for me being so cool, all right? Uh, there you go. These are all my games that are in favorites on Steam. So you wanna know what games I play? That's a pretty good list of games that I really like. I also have a list called P Potential, and I'm not gonna show you the games on, well, I could do, but basically Potential is a list of games that maybe in the future will be favorites, but at the moment they're not. So my favorites are there. Do you recognize any of my favorites? Does anyone know any of these games? I have very specific taste in games because I'm a video game connoisseur. I prefer single player games. I like complex games and I like, I play only PC games. In the past I played all kinds, but now I have a specific taste because I'm an old man. How about Mandarin? No. Ni hao. Yeah, Terraria is good.
When you say a wet paper, Manuel, what do you mean? Oh, Riyadul Islam says, please explain the IPA cardinal vowels. Please explain the IPA cardinal vowels. I don't think that is an English learning question. Because the cardinal vowels are vowel standards used to talk about the vowel sounds in all languages. So if you're talking about learning English, you don't need to go into cardinal vowels. Cardinal vowels is something for linguists, right? This is the table of cardinal vowels, okay? So if you're a linguist, you can go through these and these will give you a reference for other languages. Uh, basically, they are e, i, u, um, e, i, u, u, um, e, o, uh, e, a, uh, and a. However, as a language, as an English learner, you should be more interested in the British English or. American English phonemic charts rather than those sounds. And I do happen to have here a lovely representation of that. So if we just take the vowel version of that, it's the top left, here's the vowels, right? So we get rid of that, boom. So this is, all, this is what you really need for learning English. Now, actually, you can take this and put it over the top and you'll see actually that, hang on, can I do this? Uh, come on, Rich, how do you do it? Dun, 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 ah, there we go. Um, actually, it kind of fits over the top because these are often like a map of the mouth. So it's sort of, fit. it doesn't fit perfectly, actually. It fits, it's a bit weird because the, um, the cardinal vowels map has four, distinct levels um, that's just an approximation anyway so it doesn't really matter but it's something like that kind of fits over the top right now we just get rid of that and then learn the actual vowel phonemics not phonetics phonemics in british english which is e hang on e it uh, ooh, and you can do the actions the actions can help so watch me e Right, and then we've got eh, uh, 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 oh, oh. So it's eh, uh, 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 oh. Okay, and then we've got ah, 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 oh. I'm so British. Oh, not forgot a lot. Oh, that sound does not exist in American. So it's very British. Oh, a lot forgot. Not, not a good idea. Notice also with British, sometimes we spit the T. So it's not just not, but it's not with like a T. Not, not a good idea. A lot, a lot. Okay. All right, everybody. Thank you very much for joining me today. My name has been Teacher Rich for Oxford Online English. I'll be streaming in five minutes on youtube.com slash Professor Rich. If you want to continue learning with me today, you can go over there right now and we will be talking about habits and learning English and I will answer all your questions. Thank you so much for your time. I wish that you have a lovely, lovely weekend, and I will catch you next time. Cheers, folks. Thank you, thank you, thank you.